Thank you, Chairman. So there are several characteristics in Belgas knee. First, Belgas deformity is rare in osteoarthritis, especially in my country. And second, difficulty in acquiring good soft tissue balance in TKA. And third, maltracking or patella are common. In TKA for Belgas knee, lateral release is mandatory in many cases. Lanawat reported good clinical results using media approach with lateral release. However, others reported poor results. Also, disturbance of the blood flow to the patella was reported. In various knee, soft tissue in medial side is less. Lateral side is shortened. Therefore, the lateral approach is more reasonable to access the shortened lateral side directly. To clarify, further lateral approach has advantage of a medial approach in TKA for vagus knee. We prospectively compare the results of two types of approach. 47 knees with various deformity of a 10 degree in mechanical axis. All female, mean age 57, rheumatoid arthritis 42, and also arthritis in 5. They were allocated into medial or lateral approach. For the knee with severe deformity of a 30 degree or a flexion deformity of a 40 degree and large defect. So in such case, we have to use the semi-constraint semi knee. So we exclude, exclude it from this study. Age, deformity, and follow-up period were comparable. Scorpio Energy PS was used, and patella was replaced in knees and fixed with cement. We used medial parapatellar exposure for medial approach. In lateral approach, quadriceps and lateral retinacle was incised obliquely for corner plane Z-plasty. At the closure, we allowed the sliding of the quadriceps and retinaculum, no osteotomy at the tibia tubercle. After independent bone cutting, the tensor was used to extension in extension and flexion, and release of lateral soft tissue was down in stages. First, we released the ITB from the guarded tubercle, then cutting of ITB at the joint level, release of LCL and popliteal standard if necessary. No case of biceps release, fever head resection, MCL shortening. We compare the complication, surgical time and degree of soft tissue release, and corner alignment, range of motion at pre-op and follow-up. Corner laxity was also evaluated immediately after surgery and the time of follow-up. The corner laxity was measured by steroid radiograph. Vargas or very stress force was applied to the knee, then apical radiograph was taken. The angle between distal femoral and proximal tibial component was measured. Result, no serious complication in two groups. No difference in surgical time between two groups. Uh, percentage of soft tissue release. Green bars indicate the medial approach and red bar lateral approach. No difference between two approaches in frequency of ITB release and cutting. However, less frequent release of LCL, property standard in lateral approach. Mechanical axis. No differences between two groups at play-up and the time of follow-up. Flexure contraction angle. No difference between two groups at play-up and the time of follow-up. Flexion angle. No difference between two groups at play-up. However, better flexion angle in lateral approach at the time of follow-up. There is a various deformity, a uh, laxity. No difference between two groups at immediately after surgery and the time of follow-up. Discussion. There are some advantages in lateral approach. First, release of shortened soft tissue can be achieved in series of surgical exposure. Second, it can preserve the blood flow to the patella. Third, it is easy to improve the external rotation of tibia and better tracking of patella. Disadvantages. First, lateral approach is not standardized. Second, difficulty in inverting the patella. Kevish and Butcher reported the osteotomy of the tibia tubercle. In such occasion, delay of rehabilitation should be necessary. On the other hand, Fidian reported lateral approach without osteotomy. He stated ITB release is key to facilitate the version of patella. Our procedure was coronal plasty, ITB release, and two tutional wire insertion into the tibia tubercle to prevent the version fracture. Why better fraction was achieved in lateral approach at the time of follow-up? We paid attention to the differences attachment of the vastus lateralis and medialis. 
busted medialis is attached at the midpoint or pate of the patella or more distally, whereas busted lateralis attached at the proximal patella. Even with the same length of dissection, invasiveness to the muscle was different. Especially, no incision to the busted medialis in lateral approach. Also, reduced release procedure for lateral structure in lateral approach could result in better post-op flexion. Conclusion. In both approaches, good corner stability was achieved. In lateral approach, less frequent release procedure was necessary, and better flexion was obtained at follow-up. Lateral approach had advantages over media approach. Thank you for attention.